So, here we are. Another day, another superhero movie that leaves me questioning my sanity. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness is probably the closest thing that the MCU has to a horror movie at this point. But it's not the tone of the movie that makes it so horrifying. It's the writing. Hello, hello, this is That Guy Dom, and if you like sarcastic movie narrations, memes, or anime, then click that big red subscription button below. I walked into this movie thinking, hey, Doctor Strange is all over the posters, and his name is in the title. Surely he's the hero of this story. But Marvel had different plans. And if Doctor Strange in a Multiverse of Madness is a sign of things to come, well, Thor, you have my greatest of sympathies. But hey, it's story time, so let's dive in. Doctor Strange attends a wedding for his ex, Christine, and he's immediately roasted. But you still didn't get the girl. You can tell that he still has some regrets over their breakup, but I guess Strange forgot that he's in the MCU. Healthy relationships don't exist here, unless it involves a breakup or somebody getting widowed. A giant eyeball monster attacks the city, prompting Strange to leave the wedding early. And with it, comes our new heroine, America Chavez. Cause, you know, she wears American stripes and stars. Who exactly is she and what are her powers? I don't know. But I do know that she makes an attempt at what we call running for a great majority of this movie. So maybe I'll call her Happy Feet. Strange saves her, and the first thing she does is live up to minority stereotypes by stealing Doctor Strange's portal ring. She explains that she came from an entirely different universe, and that another version of Strange tried to kill her. I wonder why. America is able to create portals to other universes, with her hands. No rings necessary. We're looking at you, Strange. Anyway, it's speculated that the eyeball monster from earlier was the work of witchcraft. So obviously Strange goes to speak with Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, because obviously she knows something about witchcraft. And obviously, she'd be suspect number one after holding an entire town hostage to play in a crappy sitcom for all eternity. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have a Disney Plus subscription, you are SOL if you decide to watch this movie. So Strange being a very intelligent ex-surgeon and sorcerer who understands the existence of multiverses and alternate versions of heroes traveling across said multiverses, completely trusts Wanda and tells her where America Chavez is. Look out! Plot twist. This Wanda is from another universe and created the eyeball monster. And Strange is immediately roasted. So the person you had to ask for help is the person that's trying to kill me. Other Wanda explains that she wants to use America's portal powers to find the universe to be with her kids again. You remember, the ones made for magic and are totally not real? The ones created along with the fake sitcom reality all because Wanda was grieving over Vision's death? You know, because she loved Vision that much? Well, Wanda forgot. And Vision isn't mentioned one time this entire movie. But America Chavez happens to activate her power to leap across multiverses so they just get pinballed around for a bit until they land in a multiverse with the memory store in it. Now, I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking it too. How the freak does playing your memories out in open public work if your best memory is watching a prawn hub scene with Mia Khalif? I mean, a deeply personal and privately satisfying memory. But let's not dwell on that for too long, because the Doctor Strange who experienced the LSD acid trip without hurling as just the regular human in the first movie, is now all of a sudden puking his guts out in round two. Talk about character development. Look out! They bump into Mordo and they come inside, have tea, and put on the surprise Pikachu faces when they get drugged. They're locked up, Strange meets his multiverse ex Christine, and he's immediately roasted. I know you don't know me. And I don't want to. Then he's taken to meet the Illuminati. And he's immediately roasted. This strange is even more arrogant than ours. Just more alive. For now. The Illuminati view Doctor Strange as a threat because some other strange in their universe effed up the multiverse by interacting with other universes too much. Yada yada. Apparently the rules of the multiverse change between movies because Spider-Man and the Avengers already been there done that. But now they got Doctor Strange looking like. Why are you bullying me? But despite how many times Doctor Strange tells them that Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, is a threat to the multiverse, well, they couldn't care less. Look out! The Scarlet Witch does what Doctor Strange said she would, and invades their universe too. Now I know what you're thinking. Professor X, 
two people named Captain, a dude whose breath is so hot he can reduce you to mere atoms, and the smartest man alive? This group is top tier, right? They should be unstoppable. But remember, they called him the smartest man alive. See, it'd be different if they said the smartest human, because that would include females, and we know, as far as the MCU goes, that's an entirely different ballpark. Look out! And apparently everyone sniffs paint fumes in their spare time. Mr. Fantastic tells Wanda Black Bolt superpower, essentially selling his own teammate. Look out! Both our captains stand there and watch as Mr. Fantastic is turned into spaghetti. Look out! Wanda chooses to actually have a hand-to-hand -hand fight with our surviving females instead of insta-killing them. You look at it! And nobody thought to get poor Professor X a faster wheelchair. Would have been handy for situations like this. I want all of you to look at it! And Mordo would rather fight Strange than save his comrades. But that's fine. He fell in a hole and he won't return for the rest of the movie because he left his Jordans at home. Actually, I'm pretty upset that Mordo didn't play a bigger role in this movie. As a villain, since it was so hyped up in the first movie. But hey, back to it. Strange escapes with his Multiverse X as America is grabbed up by Wanda and is used to travel universes. So Strange possesses the other universe Strange, who is currently dead, but not before getting friendzoned in his own movie. He rolls up looking like he's straight out of The Walking Dead, and just as we're finally ready to see why Doctor Strange is all over the posters for this movie, and in the title, just as we're expecting to see him do something epic, he gives America Chavez an inspiring speech, she pimp slaps oh. Wanda, opens a portal, and Wanda offs herself. Credits. Alright, so how did you guys feel about all this? Do you like Doctor Strange 2? Do you like where all of this is heading? And what were your favorite moments in this movie? Me? Yeah, I enjoyed the movie for what it was, but it's hard not to notice a huge shift in how they're handling these movies. Seeing as how Doctor Strange 2 was just a huge roast session for the main character, Thor 2 is going to have to put major respect on Thor's name before handing the torch over to Jane if I'm going to be comfortable with things moving forward. Now people more cynical than I would scream, MCU, but I'm not quite there yet. However, I really dislike how Marvel is handling its female heroes. The recurring theme of believe in yourself and that being their entire character arc just is not interesting to me at all. They did it with Captain Marvel where she just has to accept her emotions and suddenly she's a Super Saiyan, but somehow her face still lacks emotion. Is that like a personal attack or something? I mean, there's just a way to handle these things. I should know, my favorite movie is Silent Hill, a movie that is so driven by female characters that the only male supporting characters in the entire movie are in reshoots. Alright, so this is that guy. Laugh and subscribe.